There we go. Alright. How's it going? I'm Lenny with Hunting Western Mass. I'm Jay. Jay and Lenny, and we're today we're going to be talking about hunting preparedness, getting ready for the hunting season. Uh, there's several things that you need to do to be ready for opening day. Right now we're about 20, 24 days away, and ready. Uh, we got our trail cams are up, and uh, we're pretty much established where we're going to hunt, and we've been looking around, um, and <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to talk about today is... Uh, we're going to talk about uh, trail cams and blinds and stands and uh, so pretty much the first thing you want to do is figure out where you're going to hunt uh, how do you figure that out well you want to hunt where the deer are so how do you find that out well if you're fortunate enough to get to have some trail cams you want to put some trail cams up and find out where where the deer are and uh, don't be worried if you don't see bucks early in the season if you find the does the bucks they will early so yep and the closer you get to you know the opening season that's the benefit of trail cams is you don't have to you know go in and uh, wait for the rut pre-rut to start you know and, and all the sign to kick up you can f find the deer with, with the trail cams it's so, cheating <laughs> yeah but it works you know wow. and uh, it's legal in Massachusetts don't be afraid I throw some apples or some pears out next to my trail cams you can do that up to 10 days before hunting season. Um, now me, I don't set up my cameras where I set up my stands um, anyways. Uh, and I usually put my stands up in between where the food source is and the bedding areas are. And that's basically what you're looking for, travel corridors um, for the deer. So with the trail cams, the important things that you want to think about are uh, locking your camera up you don't want it to get stolen or smashed recently we had a we had a trail cam get broken into the chip yeah, was taken right, yeah. it was being tampered with and um we'll talk about that a little bit later too um, when we get more into um uh, permissions and, and state regulations and stuff so you know, with the trail cams up and you you got an idea where the deer are so now you want to you now you want to put up a stand or build a blind but the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you're not on someone's private property that's an anti-hunter right. because anti-hunters you know they they do what they do and uh, the best way to find out uh, whose property it is if you're not sure is to go to the town go to the town website you look up the, the property maps you know if you have a computer type up hunting maps or type up property maps It'll come up, you can actually click on the parcel, it'll give you the name of the owner. Uh, I recently tracked down an owner um, on a piece of property uh, that I was having an issue with, with, with a guy in my camera. I contacted the owner, not only did they end up giving, uh, giving us permission to hunt there, uh, they told me uh, of the neighbor who um, does maple sugaring on the property, and he owns a lot of property around there too. I went and spoke to him he gave me permission to hunt all his land too. So contacting the people that own the property and getting the correct permissions is absolutely the best way to go. Best way, yeah. The best way because you don't want to run into trouble and you know, you shoot, I've, I've had incidences, my uncle hunts out in Michigan, they shot a 10 point buck, it jumped the neighbor's fence and went into his yard. They went over and asked them if they could go and get the deer nope absolutely not and they watched him drive a pickup truck out there pick up that beautiful deer and haul him away you know it was a deer of a lifetime and so make sure you have permission absolutely honesty is the best honesty you is know? the best policy yep and now we're gonna if they know you're there then they they respect you that you're gonna be there absolutely and always respect the land that you're hunting on even if you don't know whose land it is if you've been hunting there for years you know, respect the land. Don't I? Even if I see a little pile of trash and I'm leaving, I always try and leave the place a little better than I found it. You know, so uh, don't trash the land. Don't go cutting down trees. 
you know, chopping down a tree because it's in the way where you want to put a blind or whatever. Don't do that because, you know, it, eventually it's going to get posted and everyone's going to get tossed out of there. And then, you know, we're not going to uh, really approve of, of that kind of behavior anyway. State regulations, if you're hunting public land, Jay? Yes. The state regulations, right? Follow, you want to follow them to, Absolutely. A, to the uh, letter. Uh, safety, you know, uh, if you're on a, a wetland or, or uh, you know, where they stock birds, you need to wear an orange hat, even mm -hmm. though the, you're bow hunting. You have to wear an orange hat on uh, the you know the, the state lands. Yep. So, uh, so yep. always it's follow a safety the thing. Yep, safety is number one concern in, in, in hunting. There's too too many accidents. Too many good people get uh, get hurt or damaged. Um, and and the other regulations too, um, as far as like drilling, pu putting you know tree climbing steps up. Now they want you to use a ladder with strap-ons, mm -hmm. uh, so you're not damaging the trees. And um, you know that's that's again that's just out of respect. You, you know you don't want to go. Someone's got a nice piece of forest, and you go up and hammer up a bunch of you know two by fours to make steps and yeah. put up this you know big wooden platform then you know they're gonna get upset but if they see a nice ladder strapped neatly to the tree you know and I always I, I, I try and label my stands and my cameras um, so with a phone number so that they know you know who it belongs to so uh, thank you for bringing that up because I have always had this the screw in tight yep you screw in climb up yep. you know and those are those are I think they're they're kind of okay. I mean, if if you use them on old pines because they don't do a lot of damage, um, and you can remove them, and you know. But uh, I don't know about what the real issue is with there. If it allows bugs to get into the tree easier and disease them, so. or I'm not sure. But we don't get all highly scientific here at Hunting Western Mass. But we are uh, so trail cams, locks, uh, talk about locks for a second I use a uh, this is one of our favorite cameras this is a Primos Truth Cam and uh, this one's Jay's I have I have one just like it uh, the lock that I use is called a Python lock and it's designed specifically for this type of camera uh, you can go a lot of hunters they'll go and they'll get a lock for their camera or so they think they hike all the way into the woods to their spot put their camera up and they realize their lock doesn't fit on the camera you wasted your trip, you wasted your time, you sent it up the area for no reason at all. So make sure your lock fits on your camera. They also will make a case uh, if, you, if you're able to purchase the case that goes around it. But a lot of guys just go out and put the cameras up. So if you see someone's camera up there, leave it alone. Be you know respectful. I mean? you yeah, know? Be respectful just and it's good karma. It's you know, somebody else has to hunt too, yep. you know, and we, we respect other hunters, so. Always, yep. That's you you know, always respect. We're not the only ones, mm -hmm. and we want to share what Mother Nature gives us. Absolutely, so. absolutely. A lot of times, I'll see cameras, I'll see mock scrape ups. These guys will put up the, those drips that uh, you know will make a mock scrape, and it sets up a drip, and they'll have a camera on it. And uh, you know, so if you see it, it's not yours. Don't tamper with it, you know, just just leave it there and you know karma will come around and if you have a camera And you don't have a lock, you know, yours probably won't get stolen either But if you're worried about that, you know, you want to put it in a in a Deep wood spot and camouflage it. I like to I like to tuck some branches around it when I get the strap on I'll, I'll snap a couple branches off, you know, some small branches and, and just put a little camouflage around it so that people can't see it um, as, as well so uh, <clears throat> and, and as far as the stands go um, again follow Find the regulations yep. yeah the regulations I think in Massachusetts is get, where get permission yep yep get permission lock your stand up you don't have to like a, a, a the Python lock is designed specifically for that for stand locks I just go to Walmart and I get the cable locks there's like they come in a package of three and I just use a cable lock on my stand, but that's uh, Primo's Truth Cams. We like them a lot. We li we love uh, we love taking pictures of deer, and uh, make sure you have permissions. You can find the maps of where you're hunting uh, at your local uh, town hall website. 
um, batteries, make sure you have the correct batteries in your trail cam because the batteries, they may, if they're the wrong kind, they can cause the camera to malfunction, not function at all. And then you, you put it up for there, that. You yep. put it up there and a couple weeks goes by, you go back and there's either a zillion pictures of the trees blowing because you didn't, you know, you got to set the camera correctly. 1300. <laughs> set your camera correctly too because if you set it, you know, for, if you, if you place it where when the wind blows, a branch is going to blow, you're going to get 1200 pictures of a branch blowing. So, you know, be aware of that. Um, I usually put it up for a few days, go in and check it and make sure that that's not happening. And then I, I you know, I've had cameras in spot for a, a year or a year plus. So, um, locks, safety. safety, we're getting to that, stands. Okay, you found a deer, you found a nice run, you're seeing some big bucks on your camera, and you, you know where they're running, so you wanna put your stand up. So you put your stand up, safety is the number one issue when it comes to tree stands, right? More people exactly. have been hurt, more people have been hurt by you know not following stands, or not following the, uh, safety guidelines and we're gonna go over a few safety guidelines real quick what's uh what's a couple of them you can think of jay uh safety in a stand uh, always you wear your harness always wear your harness uh, yep always wear your harness don't fall asleep <laughs> and don't fall asleep <laughs> yep use a utility rope to absolutely to pull yes. your gear up in. Yes. a lot of times when you when you when uh, I go into a stand, especially if it's really cold, I, you know I like to carry in my heavy jacket. I carry in my my weapon. Um, I carry in you know all my gear, and never climb up in a tree stand with a loaded gun or my crossbow. I will pull it up into the stand uh, cocked, but never with an arrow in it. Never loaded. Uh, you don't want to you know ever tie anything that's loaded and then pull it up into a tree that's just a ridiculous thing I can't even <laughs> um, your harness your safety harness tree stands now they come with them like mandatory even if you buy a $40 tree stand it comes with a harness you go to buy a harness that cost 80 bucks I don't know what that's all about but uh, so you put your harness on under your hunting gear um, or I put it on under my jacket so it's you know I'm ready when I get there I climb up in the tree um, I use a safety rope. When I get up there, the first thing I do is clip in before I even pull my, my, my gear up. Clip in as soon as you're up in there, you know, and then you're safe. And the, and the harnesses they have now are great. They're comfortable. You have free range of movement, you know, you're not really that restricted. And, uh, you know, so pull up your gear with your utility rope. I actually usually leave my rope uh, to the tree. I when do I, not. When I get out, I. When I get out, I just wrap it around, you know, one of my climber steps at the bottom, so it's there. When I go back, I don't have to worry about, oh, I get there, and oh, I forgot my, I forgot my line, you know. Now what I do? Now I gotta climb yes. up in the tree without, or I gotta drag my stuff. I've up actually in the tree. forgot mine. Yeah, so that's that's why I leave mine. I had to move my climber, get up, <laughs> you know, yep. worried about not falling out yep. with the, the bow on me, yep. like, and. Yep. Uh, Never mind me, but hurt my bow. So it's not a bad idea. I, I, I attach my utility rope up where my stand is, and then I run it down the length of the tree. It just kind of hugs the tree, and then I wrap around the you know, All right, hunting western mass. So we're at uh, tree stands. We're at uh, safety. Four, four forms of communication um, that you can use for safety in your stand. Um, one of them is a cell phone. Uh, have your cell phone charged. Um, you know, a lot of times you might not have service, but have it charged anyway. You know, of course you want to have it off while you're up in your stand um, or, or on silent. But uh, try and have your cell phones, some guys, walkie-talkies. Sometimes we use walkie-talkies. Um, we don't have, a, we use a headset that's voice activated or um, we'll turn them on at predetermined times, like every hour on the hour. Um, let somebody know. You know, if you got a hunting partner, let them know where you're at. Let them know where your stand is. Physically take them there so if you don't show up, they know to come and find you um, where you're at. Um, a whistle. Have a safety whistle. I, uh, have it on you. You know, pin it to your jacket. Hey, Lexi, baby. Have it pinned to your jacket. I keep a, a compass 
small compass and a whistle. I have this, this hunting shirt. It's got a little pocket right here that zips. I keep my cell phone and my hunting whistle right in here. So in case anything happens and I'm away from my gear, uh, I can reach right in my pocket and blow a whistle to let somebody know where I'm at if I'm hurt. Um, so those are the four, the cell phone, the walkie talkie, let someone know where you're at, carry a whistle, uh, conditions log. If you're doing scouting, you might want to uh, keep a log of, of wind direction, uh, the way the wind blows at certain times of the day. Yep. Uh, and a great way to do that is to take a, 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 a feather um, on a string and you know I keep one tied to, during the hunting season to the end of my crossbow tells me which way the wind's blowing at all times it's just a light little turkey feather um, but usually in the in the morning the wind will blow up canyon and in the evening it'll generally go down canyon and we don't get all scientific here hunting in western mass but it's got something to do with the you know the the wind heating up it rises when it cools down and comes back down so you want to know which way the wind wind plays a very important factor when you're hunting deer they have the best noses in the world it's their it's the deer's eyes they can reach out with that nose and and smell you far far away um best thing is get out there yeah be safe get out there be safe so being prepared that's what this video is all about we went over trail Absolutely. cams batteries and locks make sure you have the right batteries make sure you protect your stuff make sure you have the right permissions or if you're on public yes. land make sure you follow all the state regulations even if you're on private land you got to follow all the state regulations um, <clears throat> lock up your stuff if you're in a stand safety is the number one rule um, use a harness uh, use your utility rope to pull never pull a loaded weapon up into a tree ever uh, leave a utility rope there or have a backup one in case you forget one um, carry a cell phone walkie talkie let someone know where you're at um, and and uh, we're gonna go over some some other stuff uh, and some more videos we got coming up as far as your weapon sighting in your weapon uh, more trail cam videos we're gonna talk about deer stands some more uh, we're going to talk about scents and calls, clothes and gear. Scents and calls. Scents yes. and calls, clothes and gear, uh, locations and uh, permissions. And But right now it's about being prepared. We're 24 days out. We're going to get out there and do it the right way. The right you way. Know, we're, uh, prepared. Be prepared, be respectful, and be safe. Absolutely. And this is Hunting Western Mass. Thanks for watching. I'm Lenny. Jay, thank you for watching and uh, happy hunting. Happy hunting, we'll catch you next time.